I don't like when you have a beard and you go in to get a haircut. Nobody knows what to do with the distribution of hair around the head. So I always wind up getting these hatchet jobs that I have right now. I feel like I look like a soldier who's just starting to question the war. <laughs> so what were we doing over there in the first place? Oil. You're being a real asshole. This is what happens when you do a pun with that. Ow! My father and I, back when I was in college, we engaged in a really misguided attempt at father-son bonding. We decided, hey, we're both a couple of cool cats. We, we should smoke some weed together. So we went on a camping trip and went off for a hike. We came back, we made a campfire, and we smoked some weed. And true story, we got so paranoid, we'd left the campsite and stayed in a hotel. <laughs> Came back the next morning, very silently, shamefully, put everything away. <laughs> year after that, though, we came back and we camped with confidence because we were on cocaine by then. I was like speed organizing firewood. My dad skipped a stone 13 times in a row. I was like, do it again, do it again. I love camping. We should always be camping. How come we're always not camping? The year after that, we didn't make plans to go camping. We just ran into each other in the woods. Stuff will mess up your life, guys. When I was a little kid, I'd always be like, hey, dad, I'm bored. And he'd go, you're boring. <laughs> Shut me right up every single time. If anybody in this room is a parent, take that little gem, use it with your kid. Next time they say they're bored, tell them they're boring. Cue their first existential crisis. <laughs> I am boring. How come I'm so boring? I should start a fire. <laughs> Nobody will think I'm boring if I start a fire. I mean, my first five minutes, I have to uh, say, yeah, I know, I'm that guy from Back to the Future, and I'll do all the lines from the movie for you, and I'll do this song about it, and I'll do this, like, okay, are we over that chunk now? Because now I will do a show. My grandmother's not racist. <laughs> but, like all of your grandparents, she comes from a more racist time. So there's sort of a residual racism that remains. It's like when a fat man spends his entire life sleeping on a mattress, when he dies, there's still the indentation of that fat man in the mattress. And you want to throw that mattress away, but you can't throw that mattress away because that mattress is the South. <laughs> Red Lobster, Richmond, Virginia, Sunday, it's packed. My grandma and I are watching as bus after bus and van after van of post-churchgoers are pouring into this Red Lobster. And by and large, most of them happen to be black Southern Baptists. And all of a sudden, my grandma blurts out, she goes, it must be Black Week at Red Lobster. <laughs> I was like, Grandma, what did you just say? And she's like, it's true, look how many of them there are. I was like, Grandma, you can't call them thems. Here's an iPad, distract yourself. <laughs> I don't know, draw pictures, Doris. <laughs> but God help her, you guys, she suffers from dementia. She's actually senile. So every two minutes, she has this realization again, as if for the first time, and she just keeps blurting out, it must be Black Week at Red Lobster. <laughs> Adam, I think it's probably Black Week at Red Lobster. I was like, Grandma, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and finally, we got sat, and I asked the hostess, I was like, is it always this crowded at this Red Lobster? And she was like, only during Black Week. And I was like, ah, 